So as we continue, this is a piece of training that we call the person of peace from Luke 10, verse 1 to 11. Now in the 411, we've talked about the people map and what we're finding is, you know, the best way to reach people is through your people map, through your relational network, really working to reach the people that God's put you amongst. But what we also see is Jesus setting out really a pattern or some instruction for his disciples on how to reach many other people. See, you might be in a new area where you don't know anybody, so how do you begin to find people who might be ready to hear the gospel? And we always say this, you know, the gospel, it's for everybody. It's for everyone you know, and it's for everyone you don't know yet. The gospel's for all people. So what we're going to do is... We're going to, and typically if we're training this in a room full of people, we're going to put them in groups of four or five. That works best. Groups of four or five. Get them to read through the passage together out loud a couple of times. And then we're going to ask just two questions and get them to look at these two questions. What does the messenger do? And what does the person of peace do? Okay, nice and simple. And typically they're going to find a whole lot more things that the messenger does and way less for the person of peace. So why don't I just let you run through that with your partner now, read that through, and then we'll come back and take some feedback. Okay, great. So why don't we look at the passage together and just see what does the messenger do in this passage? Okay, so let's go through that. So we see Jesus sending 72 others, two by two. So these people, they're going in teams of two, two by two. And they're going to every town and place. That's right, every place that Jesus is about to go. See, Jesus has a vision for the gospel to go everywhere. That's right, yeah. And then they're going to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. So these workers, they're going to be praying as they go and they're praying specifically for more laborers to be raised up for this great harvest work. And then verse three there, he says, go, go, I'm sending you. That's right. And uh, we've got lambs among wolves. I wonder what that really means for you. Have a think about that. I often think, you know, this is going to take humility and it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take, you know, laying down something of our lives for this great work. Um, but also take care. You know, there could be danger out there. But, but don't back off. God's with us. All right. Don't take a purse or bag or sandals. So typically we say travel light. Yeah. We don't need lots of stuff. Yeah, and don't greet anyone, so not distracted on the way. That's right. And uh, we can be real focused and intentional about the work we're doing. We're really out looking for people who are going to receive the gospel. Yeah, and when you enter a house, first say peace. So when we're going... When we're, sh when we're out sharing the gospel, we're just going about that in a peaceful way. We're kind to people. Uh, you know, sharing the gospel with people, it's one of the kindest things you'll ever do. So we're offering peace to people as we go. And we're keeping our peace. If they reject us, you know, we don't get upset or angry or get into an argument with them. We're just going to back away and move on and just keep our peace. Yeah. And uh, your peace will rest on them. If not, it returns to you. Okay, so when you find people who receive you, you stay. That's right. We're going to stay there. You see, because the person of peace, the person who's ready to receive you and receive the gospel, they're the plan for reaching this new community. They're an entrance into a whole network of new people. So they're the plan. Stay with them. And really drill down with the gospel with these people. 
Okay, don't move around, stay there. Okay, and when, to, when you enter and are not welcomed, or when you enter and are welcomed, eat what's offered before you. Heal. So we're going to heal the sick. That's right. Yeah, we're going to receive hospitality. Okay, hospitality. That's great. Yeah. And we're seeing here, just verse 9 there, heal those who are there and tell them the kingdom of God. So we're going to proclaim the gospel. That's right. Yeah. And uh, if you're not welcomed, then you move on. So there's this point here that we're going to stay where we're welcomed. But actually, when we're not received, we're going to move on because we know the plan. We know the work. We're focused and intentional on searching for people who are God prepared, who are ready to receive the gospel. It's a search. OK, great. Uh, and uh, we say we see this at the end here. So even when rejected, it says, be sure, proclaim the gospel. Be sure of this. The kingdom of God has come near to you. So we will often say this, you know, if you're in doubt, proclaim the gospel. Um, you won't you won't go far wrong there. OK, so let's move on. What do we see the person of peace doing? OK, that's right. So. When you, um, yeah, when you enter a house, first say peace. And if someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. So they're going to receive peace. That's right. Yeah, they're going to provide hospitality. You notice how so often as Christians and churches we want to be the ones providing everything. But Jesus is suggesting something quite different here. Okay, yeah. And um, we're gonna, they're going to receive healing. So there's going to be healing for these people. That's great. And then there's three things we're often very specific about when we think about the person of peace. You see, the person of peace isn't just a nice person who welcomes you and who wants to offer you some food. Um, so we're, we'll often just describe them in this way. The person of peace welcomes the messenger. Okay. They welcome you. Okay. But they're also ready for you to share with them. It's as if they're God prepared. And ready for you to proclaim the gospel to them. So they welcome the message. But then what we're also seeing is that the person of peace is the plan to reach a whole new community or network of people. They're like a gateway or a launch pad for the mission into a whole new community. And so we say that, the, that they welcome the mission. So that's the person of peace study. Okay, that's great. And maybe just think about this last question. What would it look like for us to go two by two, maybe into your community or neighborhood or your network of relationships and start searching for a person of peace? What can we learn from this? And what might it look like for us to do this? Thanks, everyone.